It's, it's interesting to hear that there really doesn't seem to be a problem, but yet I think we all instinctively know that there is some kind of problem. There isn't censorship. Of course not in, in the way that there is in Russia. I've been to Russia. I uh, faced off with uh, a, a, a deeply homophobic and unpleasant man, and there's political correctness in Russia. It's just political correctness on the right, and that's what I grew up with, political correctness, which meant that you couldn't say certain things on television couldn't say fuck, for example, on television, because it was incorrect to do so. And as always, the same reason was that someone would appear and say, I'm not shocked. Oh, of course, no, I'm not shocked. I'm not offended. I'm offended on behalf of others, young, impressionable, plastic minds, the vulnerable. And, and that's not good enough. It's, it's so often people are saying, you see, I don't mind being called a faggot or a kike or whatever, or a mad person because I've got mental health issues. I don't mind people insulting me. And people say, well, that's all right for you, Stephen, because you know you're strong. Well, I, I don't feel particularly strong. And I don't know that I like being called a faggot and a kike particularly. But I don't believe that the advances in my culture that have allowed me to marry, as I have now been for three years to someone of my gender, um, I don't believe they are a result of political correctness. And maybe political correctness is actually just some sort of live trout that the harder we squeeze it, the further it goes away. And, and you will be saying, I'm not talking about political correctness, you're talking about social justice, with which I agree with whether you want to call it identity politics or the history of your people, the history of my people. My people were slaves as well. Both the British were slaves of Romans and the Jews were slaves of the Egyptians. All human beings have been slaves at some point, and we all, in that sense, share that knowledge of how important it is to speak up. Um, but Russell Means, who was a, a friend of mine towards the end, who founded the American Indian Movement, he said, oh, for God's sake, call me an Indian, or a Lakota Sioux, or Russell. I don't care what you call me. It's how we're treated that matters. And so I'm really addressing a, a more popular idea. Um, <laughs> Also, actually, in Barrow, Alaska, an Inupiat said, call me an Eskimo. It's obviously easier for you because you keep mispronouncing Inupiat. Um, <laughs> it, 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 you know, words do matter. The, I'll just end with a quick story. Uh, gay rights came about in England because we slowly and persistently knocked on the door of people in power. We didn't shout, we didn't scream. People like Ian McKellen eventually got to see the Prime Minister. And when the Queen signed in the royal assent, as she has to, for the bill allowing equality of marriage, she said, Lord, you know, I couldn't imagine this in 1953. Really is extraordinary, isn't it? Just wonderful and handed it over. Now, that's a nice story, and I hope it's true, but it's nothing to do with political correctness. It's to do with human decency. It's that simple.